The long, long trek across Texas comes to a close as we pull into El Paso. This Union Pacific freight yard is close to the passenger station. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could please have your attention. Our next station stop, El Paso, Texas, will be coming up in about... The Sunset Limited began this journey in New Orleans on its way to Los Angeles, picking up cars from Chicago at San Antonio. Now it approaches El Paso, some 900 miles since we crossed the Sabine River at Orange. As the train eases up to the El Paso station, it can look like we're passing it up. The front end of the train pulls well ahead so that all the cars can fit on the platform. For the first time since Alpine, passengers can get off and walk around. El Paso is a service stop and a crew change. This station is one of the most notable buildings in El Paso. I always get off here to get a good look at the train that has carried me over a thousand miles so far. At the rear of the train, I see the private cars we've been pulling. These classic cars are owned by clubs, and they pay Amtrak to pull them behind the regular train. These cars are self-contained by necessity. Riders on these cars don't have access to Amtrak services like the dining car. This is a great when the people come into the train. The Sunset Limited picks up many new passengers in El Paso. From the Amtrak station, it's easy to get a glimpse of Ciudad Juarez on the Mexican side of the border. As the train pulls out, this border city remains in sight. Okay, I think that's the Rio Grande. Or as we would say in Spanish, Rio Grande. We get as close as 20 feet to the border between the United States and Mexico here. Again, that's Juarez, Mexico, off to the left-hand side of the train. These hills are usually hot and dry, but on this trip, they're covered in snow. snow out there. Yep, that's the border right there. That's what that sign, that green sign. I remembered that from coming over the first time. So that fence right there, that's the border. border on my side. Oh, our There's side three too. There. Three of them. Well, they should have an easy time tracking someone in the snow. It wasn't always snowy when we left El Paso. Wow. Looking north from the train, New Mexico's Las Cruces country was bathed in that magic hour light photographers love so much. El Paso is very spread out in this case, sprawling to the west. 
and near the west end of El Paso, we find ourselves in this new train yard. Yeah, Dad. With concrete cross ties and facilities right to lift cargo containers, this was not my father's train yard. Year after year and trip after trip, we watched the Union Pacific Railroad build this huge facility. We waited here with the eastbound Sunset Limited until we were given the green light to continue rolling westward. Through New Mexico, we still had some great western scenery. On most trips, we slept through this country. One hour. We awoke to California's Palm Springs and scores of wind turbines. This magical country told us that we were getting closer to Los Angeles. Well, we did it. Chase the sunset all the way to Los Angeles. There are so many things to do here. Close to Union Station, you can tour the oldest house in Los Angeles, have guacamole made fresh at your table or just stroll down Calle Alvarado. Union Station awaits you at the end of this long journey. You can catch another train here or just cool your heels down in LA. Either way, you can celebrate your ride on one of America's most famous trains, the Sunset Limited. <laughs>